Hey gardeners, Amy here with Garden Up. Today I want to talk about swamp milkweed. So milkweed is the plant that's essential for the monarch butterfly's life cycle. It's really great if we could all plant some in our gardens, if you're able to. This is a wonderful plant to add to your landscape. So I want to talk about this variety of it, which is swamp milkweed. One day I'm hoping to film all the other varieties, including the natives to our area. But for right now, this is the one I have. So I'm going to talk first about how to take care of this plant. And then I'll talk about how to harvest the seeds so we can make more of these plants. Also, I want to apologize for any background noise. There are people mowing their lawns and arborists working all over the place. And I'm trying to work between them. But <laughs> y'all know how it is at this point. How to grow them. Okay, so swamp milkweed specifically has to be cold stratified for at least 30 days. And what that means is that the seeds need to be cold for 30 days. So you can either put them in your refrigerator and then start them outside or in pots. I have not had great luck with these in pots. They have a big root system and they actually need a lot of space. So if you put them in like little pony packs, they'll get a couple inches high and then they'll just stop growing. So you've got to keep potting them up or just transplant them into the ground. But honestly, it's far easier to just throw these seeds straight at the ground in the fall when the plant is doing it naturally, let nature do its thing, and it'll come up in the spring most likely. Some of the seeds will get eaten by rodents and birds. That's just part of nature. But for the most part, that's the easiest way I've ever found to germinate these. So I'm filming this video at the beginning of September. Any time between now and November is a perfect time to throw these seeds down. So just get them on the ground and then let nature do its thing and you'll have some plants the following year. Let me show you what a first year one looks like. So this one here, this is a swamp milkweed that volunteered because I missed a seed last year and it germinated and it is now one season old basically. It germinated this spring and it's now becoming an established plant. I'm gonna have to move this because it's not in a good place. It's right next to my curb. People got to get in and out of their cars, etc. But I usually let my volunteers grow so that I can give these to clients, transplant them, give them away, whatever, because they will become gorgeous plants. This thing is gonna have a root that's about a foot deep already and quite wide. Okay, so again, when you move these, you've got to be prepared for what's gonna be under the soil. What I want to show you this for is so you know what an immature plant looks like so that you know that this didn't bloom this year. Its first year it will not flower, but it will flower in its second year. So you've got to keep these going for at least two years before you get flowers. In Spokane we just don't get very many monarchs, so I don't expect to see monarchs, but I do see swallowtails uh, drinking the nectars from the flowers and like I said lots of other pollinators. But if you grow this plant and you do see a caterpillar eating these leaves, that's most likely a monarch. Make sure to leave it. So once you get these plants growing, there's really not a lot to do to them. They don't need fertilizer. They need some water in our arid climate, but they don't need a lot. Uh, that's one of the great things about swamp milkweed is it grows almost anywhere. It's native to, I believe, the southern and eastern United States, but this plant specifically was chosen uh, by SaveOurMonarchs.org because it will grow anywhere with or without extra water. That's where I originally got my seeds from, by the way. If you want to order from them and support them, SaveOurMonarchs.org. I'll put a link down in the description below. I am working on growing some of our native varieties of milkweed, but I haven't gotten there yet and they're not ready to give seeds or anything. So I don't have seeds to share yet, but stand by and one day I'll be able to give those seeds away too. So if you want seeds for this plant, you can message me, like send me an email with your mailing address and I'll shoot you a few seeds. But honestly, I really recommend you just go to SaveOurMonarchs.org and order from them because uh, they are doing some really, really great things for monarchs all around the country. Okay, so once you get it growing, like I said, there's not much to do with it. It doesn't need fertilizer. It doesn't really need any care. Just deadheading or collecting the seeds at the end of the year is all I do to these plants. And if you want to leave the stems, 
you can also support other insects and pollinators because there are some bugs that do lay their eggs inside the pithy stems of these plants. I usually cut mine down in the spring just to keep things tidy, but I may change that practice soon. I'm not sure. We'll find out. Again, stay tuned. I'll keep you posted on everything as I learn it as far as keeping a garden friendly for pollinators. So in order to harvest milkweed seeds, you're going to want some snippers, some kind of cutters, and something to catch the seeds in. I'm finding it's easiest to catch them in a bowl and then put them in a bag. I used to catch them straight in the bag, but it's a little bit more tricky. You want to cut off the pods that are open. I start with these because the seeds are already flying away and I want to save as many as I can and not make a nuisance for my neighbors, right? So you just take these and you squeeze the seeds to pop them loose from their fluff into your catching tool. If you find one with seeds that are like shriveled or messed up in some way, those probably aren't viable, so don't bother saving those. So once I've got all the ones that are already throwing seeds, I want to start looking for these pods that are starting to dry, they're getting a little less green, and they've got a split on one side. Cut those off because these ones are ready to pop open. These are the easiest to harvest everything. And so what you do is you just pinch top to hold all the fluff and then roll it in your fingers a little bit back and forth and then just dump it straight into your bowl. But whatever you do, do not pull one off that's not already starting to split. So I prematurely split this one and you'll see that the seeds, they lack their color. Often they're green. They're also often still wet. Most of these are not yet viable. I'll catch them anyway, just because I already opened this pod, but it's really important to not try to collect the seeds early because you will lose viability, which will affect your germination rate. And it's basically just a big waste, so you don't want to do that. Now, once your milkweed starts to throw its seeds, if you're going to collect the seeds, this is a daily chore. You want to get to it at least every two days at the most, otherwise you're going to be throwing seeds all over the place and they'll likely become a weed in your neighbor's opinion because they'll be, you know, digging them all up forever. So if you don't want to commit to doing this, just deadhead your plant. Like, don't make this plant a weed in other people's eyes. It's much more important. If we're going to be helping the butterflies, it's better to grow this plant where it will be appreciated versus just anywhere where people are going to start to see it as a weed and they're going to think they need to spray it because that's the worst thing that can happen is if people start spraying this plant. Another way to save some time, especially if the plant is already throwing its seeds all over the place, is to simply cut the open seed pod straight into a bag. That way you catch everything and you can deal with it when you have more time. After trying this a few times though, I do have a few suggestions for prepping your bag. So inside the bag are all these folds and things where the seeds will get caught underneath and it makes it harder to get them out of the bag. And this one actually has a hole in the bottom, I didn't notice that. So I'm going to try taking some packing tape and covering up all of those folds. Now I have a bag full of milkweed seeds with fluff and, I don't know, whatever you would call the shells of the seed pods, chaff, whatever you want. There's a few ways that you can try to separate this. I've always just shaken the bag and then kind of done this where you throw fluff everywhere, which is not ideal. But I did read a trick online, so I'm going to give it a try right now. What you do is you take some pennies or some small pebbles or something along those lines, and you throw it in the bag with the seeds. And then you shake it, and that hopefully agitates it enough to actually separate the seeds from the rest. So now we have that, which isn't too bad. A lot of it's separated, but there's quite a bit that's still attached. Yeah, see, there's still several seeds how to get the seeds out of the bag without all the fluff. That was the other problem I've always run into. But if you cut the corner off of the bag, you can just 
pour it into a bowl or another container and theoretically all the seeds come out. So let's try that. This is actually a lot faster than other methods I've used. So I'm gonna go with yes, this, this is a good option. All right, cool, so there's that. And lastly, don't forget to label your seeds. So this is another method I learned about recently that I'm going to try. I don't know how well this will actually work for germination. This is an experiment, but for when you have seeds that are just all fluff, this might be a good solution. So I'm going to cut them straight into the bowl. Metal bowl, it's got to be metal. Let's see why in a minute. method make sure you're on concrete or stone or something that won't burn and away from anything else that'll burn. I have no idea how much this is gonna flare up but let's find out. I'm not experimenting with how things burn. I'm experimenting with getting the fluff off these darn seeds. Okay so you can't do this with the chaff. So this method you definitely have to take the chaff off first that that absolutely affected because there's still some seeds that are stuck in their seed pods and still have the, the fluff attached so we're gonna put those back in and I'm gonna try it again this one that these seeds were all in their casing still one clearly got burnt which probably won't grow but this is what experiments are for separating all these leaf seed pod sheath things okay. All right, let's try this again. All right, so I'm gonna put these in a separate bag so that I can experiment with them next year to see if it affects the germination rate. All right, let's try this again, but in a different way. All right, it's getting dark, so we should be able to see this really well, which will be cool. These were collected by just the fluff and the seeds. Ready? And then the seeds are ready to be put in the collection bag. So it took several times lighting the fluff on fire before it all burned away. So it's definitely not my favorite method. It's not what I'm gonna do first, but it might be a good option for like final cleanup for when you've got, you've still got fluff in the bag with more seeds tied into it, you could light the rest on fire and just burn the fluff away. So it could be useful. I just don't think I'm going to do that first. That'll be last. So thanks for watching everybody. If you enjoyed this and learned something, please remember to hit the like button, uh, leave a comment if you have a question, and remember to subscribe if you haven't already so that you can follow me on my journey of learning about pollinator gardens and through my, the years of my business and all those good things. Um, and without further ado, I will sign off. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the garden.